of my buddies Lobster and Red Eye and these two kids had this apartment on Pine Street. Soon after noon, I'm alone there, because they all went down to the package store, when this girl moves in across the hall. She's about seven months pregnant, and she's carrying these boxes up the stairs. Now, so I decided to give her a hand moving her stuff. Yeah, well, she had clothes, records, dishes, shit like that. I helped her move all her stuff in. So after I'm done, I go back over the hall to my apartment, and everybody's back from the package store. Uh, they got a couple of cases of mud, a couple of bottles of Jack, and we start getting fucking caught. All of a sudden, I says, I can get into listening to some music right about now. But we ain't got no stereo, though. I remember seeing one back in that girl's apartment, though. So I says, hold on a minute. I goes over and takes my harpoon down off the wall, because this is what I'm working off of Larry's boat. I walks across the, door, the hall, I kicks her fucking door in, aims my harpoon at her and says, I'm taking that stereo, bitch. You give me any static, I'll fucking run you right through. So she starts crying and shit, you know. I pick up the stereo and walk back to my apartment with it. I wasn't really going to hurt her. You know, she all know. So about a half hour later, I goes back over and says, hey, look, baby, I'm sorry. I don't know what gets into me sometimes. I know I'm a fucking asshole. I'm sorry about what happened. I wouldn't blame you if you never spoke to me again. Why don't you come over with, you know, come over to my apartment and party with us, have a couple of beers. Uh, she called the cops on me, though. I remember this one time we did a drugstore in Rhode Island. I stayed in there until goddamn near sunrise looking for this guy's second set of books. Now, usually, we get a job done like this in 10 minutes tops. But part of what we took was like 650cc vials of liquid pharmaceutical cocaine. A fucking major hospital wouldn't dispense that much in a year. The only place around here I can think of would be the Mass Eye and Air Infirmary, because they use coke as a local anesthetic and eye operations and shit. So I know this motherfucker is dirty. I'm saying to myself, if I can find that guy's second set of books, I'll never have to rob another drugstore. I'll photo static copy of his books and say, hey, look, you can pay me now or you can read about it in a fucking Providence Journal. He probably had those in a safety deposit box somewhere under his wife or one of his kids' names. So I met an old buddy of mine at the post office when I went down to pick up my check. A guy named John. I did a bit of Plymouth House of Correction with him. He only got out yesterday. He's telling me half the guys we were in there with, you know, that, that got out since that I got out, are already back. I told him when he got out, if we, if we ever run into each another, I'd, I'd get him a buzz. And I gotta get him a buzz, because I gave him my word. And when you're in prison, all you got is your word. I killed this fucking guy in New Bedford. I'm down there alone, fucking dope sick. I got a hundred fucking dollars, I'm gonna top a bundle. And I can tell this motherfucker's got designs on jacking me up. I give me this bullshit, tells me to drive on the block. I've seen that car three times today. This neighborhood is getting hard. I think they're watching us. Bat 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 bat. You know, so I says, what the fuck? They're gonna stop watching me if I drive around the fucking block? Give it up, Hector. I ain't got all day. Now he's got both of his hands in his pockets where I can't see him and he pulls one of his fists out of his pocket and pushes it through the window like he's gonna drop the dope in my lap. I'm in my van, so I stick my fist out the window like I'm gonna give him the money. But I got a 38 between my seat and the console. Pop! He drops. I jump out, grab the dope and screw. You know, I ain't saying he's really dead, I didn't check his pulse or nothing, but you take a bullet for your boy and you ain't getting home and walking home after that.